Let's talk a little bit about the power of social media and you know how your customers are working with that and maybe a little bit about the workflow and a little bit about some best practices. Sure. Uh, there's a number of things that our Brightcove customers can do uh, regarding social and the Brightcove player in particular. The, there are built-in integrations with Facebook and Twitter, and the Facebook one in particular is powerful because the Brightcove player is whitelisted. So publishers who have their own page, their own presence on Facebook where they have whatever information that they're uh, giving out to the audience that they've earned there can also publish video directly in that, uh, in that environment. The player is whitelisted, so the video will play automatically. You get the actual video player as opposed to a link to the player. And you can also run your own advertising in there, which is something that's very powerful if you're a, a media company in that regard. So do you physically have to sort of republish onto Facebook, or does it kind of go up automatically with the metadata around and the headlines, and how does that work? Yeah, there are a few ways to do it. Most do republish to Facebook directly. That's the easiest way for them to control it themselves. The other half of the formula, of course, is that you can have a player on your own property or other partner properties, if you will, that allow sharing to Facebook, and if it's a Brightcove player, when a user watches that video and says, I want to share to Facebook, they will get that player again embedded directly in their own news feed. So you get sort of auto-publishing from your user base, from your viewership, and that obviously tremendously can grow the uh, amount of engagement that you get on social, accrues back to your own business, sends people back to your site ultimately, which is what people are looking to do. There's um, you know, some publishers who are doing great with video on Facebook. Could you tell us how some of your customers are doing? Uh, if Is Facebook consumption becoming a big part of the mix or a small part? How do you see that shaking out? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I, there are, there's no doubt huge success being found on, on Facebook. You know, a lot of it comes down to the brand and whether or not the brand has A, a good presence on Facebook that's well well presented and B, the brand has an audience which is on Facebook, an engaged audience which is on Facebook. We've seen customers like the, the Guardian, Sony Music has done a ton on there. We've seen some in the in the marketer space. I think um, Thomas Pink, I believe, has a great Facebook presence and some other retailers and marketers have, have done uh, done very well there as well. The Twitter story is a little bit different. Obviously, we have a built-in integration with Twitter as well within the Brightcove player. So if you have a player that's published, you can have a share on Twitter. What typically happens is what gets shared is a link, and that link brings you back to a player on a separate page, which is a fine experience, but not the built-in experience. Twitter, of course, all, also has their built-in experience, and this ends up being a individually negotiated um, contract between Twitter and whatever publisher because Twitter wants to make sure that if they're allowing this kind of rich content on their property that they're benefiting from it financially. And I, I don't have data to say whether or not it's hugely successful. We have a handful of customers, joint customers, who have done this on Twitter. They feel that it's important to do so because their audiences are finding them there and are engaging with them there. That's really what it comes down to is that as a, as a publisher who's distributing content, not that you have to be everywhere, but you need to be the places where your audience is interested in finding you.